The S23 Ultra has just got the One UI 6.1.1 update. It has brought all of the new features that came last week with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. But how does it actually stack up against the S24 Ultra? Is there a difference in performance and how all the functions work? Today, we find out. Let's go. The S23 Ultra's update isn't small. However, it is about 300 megabytes smaller than the S24 Ultra's update. I've only noticed one feature that's missing from the change log, which is photo ambient wallpaper. It's not there. So the S23 Ultra doesn't have the AI sort of weather effect wallpaper that was in the S24 Ultra and on the Fold 6 as well. So this doesn't have it. To my knowledge from the change log, that's all that's missing. Not a big deal though. What I want to do is compare the AI functions and sort of how they operate. Because I think if you've got an S23 Ultra, you might look at the S24 Ultra and think shiny, new, got this 5X camera. What am I really missing? So along with the AI functions, I'm also going to be doing another camera comparison now that the update versions are the same. Starting with sketch to image. Headline feature with One UI 6.1.1 using the S Pen to generate images. So I wanted to compare and see how they function on both phones. A few ways to access it, of course, you have the Edge panel, you have Air Command, you have the Gallery, and other places like Smart Select and Samsung Notes as well. For this one though, it's the Air Command or the Edge panel. When we go into the Edge panel version uh, and you draw your image, and then you choose your style and you hit Generate, I just want to see the time it took to generate the image. Turns out, it was exactly the same, barring like a half a second difference, which is negligible and just margin of error. The results were kind of similar and different, of course, because it's generating sort of two sort of roughly similar photos or images or sketches, but being done at the same time is no real surprise as it's sort of a server end server side thing. I really just wanted to see though, if the server that's for the S24 Ultra is getting preference to the S23 Ultra, let's keep going. Sketch to image inside the gallery functions a little bit differently in that when you draw something, it gives you a lifelike version of that object as opposed to watercolor or sort of cartoon that you can choose the style of. What you'll notice in down the bottom is the new AI button that Samsung have moved out of the photo editor and into the toolbar of the gallery. Nice move, reduces heaps of steps. I drew a coffee mug in the sketched image on both the same photo on both the S20 Ultra and S24 Ultra. The S20 Ultra was like fraction of a second quicker, but nothing sort of huge. And the styles of mugs were, were different, which again, you can sort of expect. But so far, pretty even in terms of the functions and how they perform. Next thing I wanted to test is Portrait Studio. Portrait Studio being that function that turns you into like a cartoon or a watercolor sketch, however you sort of choose the style that you choose. Again, using the same selfie of myself, I turned myself into a comic book character. The S24 Ultra was noticeably faster at this process. Again, I don't know why. It just, that's how it panned out. Both, however, produced pretty good results. I think you'd be happy with either. If you had the S24 Ultra, you'd be happy. If you had the S24 Ultra, you'd be happy. Pretty much functionally, they're the same. So if you've got an S23 Ultra, you're not missing out on anything with this feature. So sort of moving out of the sort of sketch to image and the sort of image generation type thing and into some sort of more functional or more sort of practical use cases. Things like Message Composer. I thought I'd be a bit funny with the prompt that I give Message Composer, as you can see in the clip. What I wanted to test was how fast it took to compose the message. The S23 Ultra came back with a result slightly in front of the S24 Ultra, but it didn't like the prompt that I gave it, even though it was the same as the S24 Ultra, and it gave me a result, a proper result. The S23 Ultra said it can't do it. Weird considering that they're theoretically using the same backend server, why wouldn't they be able to give me a result? Kind of kind of odd that I found that little bug. Don't need bugs. Samsung have also updated a lot of the Notes AI features, as well as sort of calling it Notes Assist instead of just Samsung Notes inside the Galaxy AI menu. You'll notice that there's a new way of actually using it. The UI has become a lot easier to use. The little corner after you sort of hit Summarize it's much better than what it was before. Hopefully you notice that if you're using it. In terms of summarizing a document, the S23 Ultra came back faster with the result, which I thought was kind of strange. Again, it's not that it's doing it on the device, so it sort of takes the processor out of it, but the fact is they're both connected to the same Wi-Fi. You'd think the speeds of coming back from the server would be the same, but the S23 Ultra did it faster. I found that sort of when you had the standard 
summary, and then when you expanded it out into detailed, same thing happened. SVI Ultra just clipped it just by a little bit. In auto formatting, however, again, there's no real science to this, it seems, the SVI Ultra did it slightly faster. But is it fast enough to make you go spend money on a new phone? No. Something that is processed on the device, though, is the transcription of audio notes, whether that be in the voice recorder or in the new way you can do it now, inside Samsung Notes directly. Something that was quite odd is that the S20 Ultra did it faster the first time around I did it, but they were running off different language packs. So I changed it to make sure they were both on English Australia, and then I ran it again. This is where you can see the advantage of the processing power of the S24 Ultra. Not that it was like streets ahead, it was faster considerably, but not enough that again, that you just run out to upgrade. The other thing you kind of notice is that it wasn't a very long clip, it was like maybe 30 seconds. So maybe over the course of a longer clip, that advantage might stretch out. But for this one in particular, the S3 Roger had a slight lead, slight advantage. Summarizing it though, the same. Now stepping into some of the sort of other functions that were in the changelog, live effects being the first one I'd like to look at. Live effects is quite cool in that you can sort of generate this sort of moving sort of photo effect where your face and sort of background kind of move away from each other. Not new or revolutionary, it's definitely been out on other platforms before, but first and now native to the gallery in One UI. Generating the live effects on the same photo was the same on both in terms of speed. What was different is when you wanted to save the clip afterwards. You can see the S24 Ultra sort of race ahead in terms of processing and saving that to storage. Instant slow-mo was the same. You Again, after you've sort of clipped and sort of long pressed down and you can see it sort of clipped the slow-mo with the button at the top. When you hit save slow-mo clip, that little button, again, the S24 Ultra just processes it and saves it into storage faster than what the S23 Ultra does. That is the advantage of the newer processor in that sort of processing of, and rendering of things. It can just do it quicker. There's a feature in here that I didn't mention in my S24 Ultra One UI video. So you can actually go and check that out up here if you want. But there's a feature that allows you to clip motion photos and turn them into GIFs. And not just GIFs, like stickers. So when you long press on what is a motion photo, you sort of extract you out and remove the background. When you hit the three dots and you hit create GIF, it'll turn that sticker into a GIF with the background removed. I think that's kind of fun. It does at the exact same time frame on both the S24 Ultra and S24 Ultra. Again, you're not saving time by having the newer phone. So there's no real advantage to the S24 Ultra with any of these AI functions. If you have an S24 Ultra, you might view this as a negative, but definitely if you're an S23 Ultra user, it's a huge positive to sort of not be missing out on functions and they perform the same. However, with all that being said, this next part, might make you question your S23 Ultra and look at the S24 Ultra a little bit more favorably. In my camera comparison in my last video between two S24 Ultras, I noticed Samsung kind of tweaking the processing a little bit, sort of improving it in sort of subtle areas to make it a little bit sort of more neater and better aesthetically pleasing for your image. Well, it doesn't seem like they've done that with the S23 Ultra. Let's take a look. I want to start with just the standard 1X photos because this is the camera most people use pretty regularly. I took some photos of my kids. Being a father, it's something I do quite regularly. And something I immediately noticed on the S24 Ultra compared to the S23 Ultra is the difference in the skin tone. There's some darker contrasting going on on the S24 Ultra compared to the S23 Ultra, which completely overblown the skin tones and made them too light. I, I didn't like it and it's not how they look in sort of real life. The S24 Ultra was much closer in both these photos to what they actually are represented in real life. When I took the phone outdoors, I noticed an immediate difference in sky tone. The blue was completely different in both, but that wasn't even the most noticeable difference. If you look at the lighter areas, so not the part covered by shadow, the grass is so much sort of punchier and has more color and vibrancy about it compared to the S23 Ultra, which almost overblown the grass and that bright area. And it's not just the grass that you notice that, it's the fence too. The fence is kind of almost shimmery on the S23 Ultra versus actually sort of accurate and sort of contrasted right on the S24 Ultra. That I noticed not just in this photo, but also when you head indoors. The part of the ground that's sort of, again, not shaded, you can actually see in way better detail 
sort of the floorboards compared to what you can on the S23 Ultra. It's really strange. Also the ottoman. I've noticed the ottoman is completely crushed and that green is almost like too dark on the S23 Ultra or it's properly balanced on the S24 Ultra. And even, I know it's crazy, but the water bottle that's blue, again, it's too dark on the S23 Ultra but perfectly balanced on the S24 Ultra. So there's definitely some color differences across the two cameras that I noticed. Heading back outside, the S24 Ultra again retains the better contrast and detail on the bricks, but not only that, the sunlight, the S23 Ultra kind of reflected it poorly, whereas the S24 Ultra didn't really absorb it and sort of create that sort of halo effect, whatever it's called, the one that sort of makes the, the sunlight reflect off the lens and sort of you see it. It's escaping me off the top of my brain. I'll probably remember it when I edit later. Lens flare. When I extend out into some of the other cameras, I notice a similar thing, especially in the 3X photo that I took of my kids. Again, the sort of skin tones were, were vastly different. And again, the S24 Ultra did a much better job. What I was most curious about though, was the difference between the zooms. Because a lot of people have, again, have talked about the zoom and the S20 Ultra being the king of long range zoom. I wanted to see if that was still the case. I took a 10x shot of my son's face, again, standing sort of closest to him, but I think this is a good way of highlighting detail differences. There's definitely a lot more noise on the S24 Ultra, but it's probably also retained a bit more detail. Whereas the S20 Ultra is a bit flatter and almost smoothed out a little bit too much, I would say. The photo of this building here, this hotel, you can see that the S24 Ultra is darker and the S20 Ultra is quite light on the processing. I would say the S24 Ultra has the more detail at 10X, but it's definitely darker. So the preference of what you'd like is up to you and which one you prefer, you let me know. I don't know, I think I like the darker one. Not sure why that is. I think I just like contrast more than I do just sort of flat light photos, but that's just me. You could prefer something different. And then extending out to 30X, it was exactly the same. Again, I would say the detail probably goes to the S24 Ultra, but again, it's that darker sort of detail as opposed to the lighter processing that the S20 Ultra gives me. Something weird did happen though, sort of, in between 10 and 20x on the S23 Ultra. I had it set to 19.5 on both because I know there's like a processing change that happens at 20x. And the S23 Ultra sort of smeared the photo, almost like Galaxy AI got involved and turned it into like a watercolor. It was very bizarre. The S23 Ultra didn't do that at all. When I flicked it over into 20x, the S23 Ultra completely rectified the problem and was fine. It's just something that must be weird in like a bug that's in the firmware to do with the algorithm. I'm sure Samsung will fix it. It's just something I noticed, thought I'd highlight it. Editing Dan back here again. So according to Sam Mobile, who I obviously work for as well, Samsung have actually pulled the update for this exact reason. So it means they are aware of it and they are working on a patch. So if you have the update already, expect a patch soon. And if you're waiting on the update, obviously they're working on it. Something I really wanted to check too was the in between five and 10X, because I know the S20 Ultra is using that 3X for that range, whereas the S24 Ultra is obviously using the 5X with the higher resolution. The S20 Ultra is okay. It's serviceable in a pinch, but you can clearly see at 7.5X where the advantage of the S24 Ultra lies because the detail is there everywhere, not just in the ball, but in the grass and the dirt surrounding it. Whereas the S20 Ultra kind of only retains the ball as much as it can and everything else is falling apart. The S24 Ultra is just better because it's using that high resolution to crop down as opposed to having to crop from a 10 megapixel 3X camera. That's the big advantage for me is that 5X camera and keeping the 3X as well. Bit of a genius move there from Samsung. The video situation was kind of a similar story to the photos in that the sky tones were vastly different, but also the contrast difference in the fence and in the grass immediately jumped out at me. The S24 Ultra balanced it better, the grass retained its color and the fence as well, especially in those light areas, whereas the S20 Ultra kind of over blew those highlights a little bit, which was surprising. I, I don't know if I remember it doing that, and you could probably go back to my camera comparison way back at the start of the year to see if there's any differences, but as of now, these exist. So that is the S20 Ultra's version of One UI 6.1.1. It won't reflect that in the version number of the software, but just know it is actually 6.1.1. It just doesn't say it. It's got all the features that were in the Fold and Flip 6 earlier in the year. Like, gee, that was July. 
three months ago. So you've got all of those functions and features minus, of course, the foldable stuff. Outside of that, it's basically the same for all intents and purposes. Hit subscribe to take with benefits. Big few months ahead. Look forward to seeing you. Catch you in the next one. You.